was Dr. Lisa until until I really um, started witnessing it myself at my workplace. Uh, although I was not a you know a target. And I like how you use that term. I think you use, I think you talk about say target more more than you say victim. So mm -hmm. um, I, I like I like how you how you phrase that because um, it does it does you know help us to have a different perspective when we don't look at ourselves as victims um, versus being a target. Um, and so you know I'm looking forward to you unpacking that later on tonight as well. So uh, Sister Sid, are we already ready to go? Yeah, because you basically introduced her already, so I wanted to make sure that we captured that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, oh, I saw the record button too. So yeah, we did. Hey, look, I saw it too, Rico. I was like, wait, a minute, I see this red flash. She's she right. making a show. She's making a show coming right in off our little break. Yes, oh, right. like you basically introduced her. You started talking about what she was here for. I'm like, I might need to go ahead and start recording. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how this is going to flow. Okay, so. okay, okay, okay. Well, uh, you want to do the welcome then, sister? We, I don't know if people you know, know the welcome, welcome, welcome. A absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, welcome to Nothing But The Truth. As you can see, we have a special guest tonight, Dr. Barrow. Um, <clears throat> she is a expert, an expert in workplace bullying. And so we brought her here tonight to share some insight on that. So as usual, um, we pray that God is glorified and that his people are edified through this conversation. So, um, as you know, my name is Sydney and I'm the moderator. Um, to my left is Brother Rico. Um, to the bottom right is Pastor Seiko. So the other beautiful woman must be Dr. Barrow. So we're so glad that she's here. So without any further ado, I will turn it over to Pastor Seiko. All right. Well, again, uh, thank you all for, for joining us tonight. Uh, we had a, a little small break. Uh, but we are definitely glad to be here tonight. And for those who may be joining us um, later on uh, on YouTube, once this is posted, uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your, your prayers. And also uh, thank you for sharing the word uh, about our ministry, Nothing But The Truth uh, broadcast. And like my co-host said, we, we have a, you know, we have a great show tonight and, uh, and excited for our guest, uh, Dr. Lisa Barrow. She wrote a book uh, regarding workplace bullying. And so we want to discuss the topic of this uh, subject tonight, uh, the believer's response or believer's responsibility to workplace bullying. Um, it is not just for people who are outside uh, of the body of Christ that, that experiences bullying, but those of us who name the name of Jesus Christ, those of us who are saved. And so uh, Jesus says, in this world, you will have tribulation, but, but be of good courage. I have overcome the world. But it does not mean that we are to be exempt from uh, trouble or to be exempt from troubles and, and trials uh, in this life. And, and unfortunately, uh, we know that not every workplace is an ideal workplace. Some people go to work and they, uh, <coughs> they are going through all kinds of, of troubles and, and, and if they could find a way to get out, they would, but they're persevering and they're struggling through it. So Tonight, our guest is going to discuss that. She's going to share her personal testimony. Uh, she's going to give you and I uh, some tools and some resources on how we as believers can respond to bullying, and not just for ourselves, but to help our neighbors, to help those that do not know how to respond and to deal with workplace bullying. There's somebody out here that are that is probably ex experiencing fear, uh, that, are, that are, are fearing their jobs or on on the line that are being jeopardized because if they were to stand up or speak up or speak out, that that could be the end of their career. And a lot of people put a lot of time and effort and uh, years into uh, their careers only to have it to be maligned or misrepresented or to be uh, maliciously uh, attacked by people who do not care about them. So we want to speak to those individuals and also to speak to, to you, the listener, the viewer, uh, that there is hope. And if you are a Christian, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the greatest resource available to man, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. And so he tells us in his word that, uh, that he has given us all things for life and godliness. And so we have brothers and sisters here on, on, the, on our show. We have our beloved guest, Dr. Lisa Barrow, that's going to be sharing with us on tonight. So I'm excited about it. Dr. Lisa, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. And thank you for having me. It's, it's an honor uh, to be here to discuss uh, this topic, this very important topic with you. So thank you for having me. 
Great. Well, let's jump right in. Let's talk about the title of your book, Dr. Lisa. What is the title of your book, uh, and why did you title it that? The title of my book is In Darkness, Light Dawns, Exposing Workplace Bullying. And the reason why I titled the book that way is because uh, when we look at workplace bullying, uh, it's a it, it's a very dark experience for individuals, and so what I wanted to do is to convey the message that even though you're going through darkness, uh, there is light, there is hope, and once you understand what workplace bullying is, then you can begin to take the steps to address it, and in in doing so, uh, it will bring uh, more light and hope into your, your experience and into your, um, hopefully, your, your workplace interactions. And so in Darkness Light Dawns, I wanted individuals to know that regardless of how dark and, and uncertain the situation is, there is still hope. And you have to you know, cling on to that in order to uh, survive uh, workplace bullying. So that is why I uh, titled the book that way. So thank you for asking me. Uh, no problem. That. Now, let's talk about some things because what, what made you actually, you know, get involved and be such an advocate, you know, uh, regarding this particular, you know, uh, situation and topic? Because, you know, some people will say, well, you know, Dr. Barrow, you know, um, workplace bullying is not as big as you may may claim it to be. I mean, you know, it doesn't happen in my job. It doesn't happen in my, you know, other people's jobs. So why is it such an issue? If it was an issue, don't we think that laws would be passed regarding this issue, that we would have people that are being bullied on the workplace, that there'll be some type of, you know, uh, justification or some type of vindication, if you will, against this type of uh, treatment? Mm -hmm. All right, so let me... Uh, you've asked uh, several questions there. So why did I uh, become involved in, in this movement? It, it started after I had experienced workplace bullying uh, for the first time. And I really didn't understand what I was experiencing. So I worked in the auto industry. Wow. And I had a manager who started off to be pretty decent, but then uh, once uh, she found out that I was pretty knowledgeable with uh, just-in-time manufacturing mm -hmm. uh, principles, I had been working on my uh, master's degree, and she had been uh, brought in to the organization as a just-in-time uh, guru. Mm -hmm. and it didn't take long for me to figure out that she didn't know as much about just-in-time manufacturing as she had uh, led others to believe. And the reason why I say that is because when I was working on my master's degree, I was doing research on just-in-time manufacturing. So I was pretty excited that I had a manager who was going to be there and we could share stories and learn from one another. And unfortunately, that wasn't what uh, she had in mind. And so it seemed as if the more knowledge I gained and the closer I got to receiving my master's degree, the problem started and as she started off at the corporate ladder and I thought this is great but that relationship uh, quickly turned into one in which she would begin to you know yell at me or to question the work that I had done and I had been doing fine uh, for years before she came and at the time I thought well this is just part of the process I need to experience this as I if I want to move up the corporate ladder but then it became more vicious mm. and, and I thought well this doesn't feel right however this <clears throat> is what the powers that be do and you have to experience this mm -hmm. after a while it got to the point where uh, after i had received my master's degree i i made a decision to leave the organization because it was becoming a very toxic environment mm -hmm. i still at that point did not realize what i had been experiencing so uh, fast forward uh, i was working on my uh, phd i i 
went over to the competitor and, and thought, oh, this is great. Uh, when I was uh, interviewed, they said they were looking for change agents. And I said, oh, well, I'm your person. I, I'm all about change. And things were going along well until uh, an employee had basically put me in a bear hug and was getting ready to uh, throw me on the ground. And that particular uh, situation, there was an investigation and it was found that my supervisor and managers did not handle the situation properly. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they were disciplined. So that was the catalyst for my longest experience with workplace bullying. And up until that point, I was on track for being promoted and my supervisor and managers were all supportive. But after they got in trouble, you know, the story changed mm -hmm. and the environment changed. And instead of being seen as a very positive and progressive employee, they started to see me in a different light. And the, over the, the next couple of years, I was denied opportunities for promotions. Uh, I was, you know, lied, you know, people said lies about me and what have you. So it was very, very, very ugly. Mm -hmm. but, but through that time, I was writing my first book, uh, Hope for a Healthy Workplace. And I was working on my, my PhD. And I had created a, a leadership model called philanthropic leadership. And the reason why I created that model was because I wanted, uh, I looked at the various leadership models that were out there and I wanted one that was more positive. I wanted to introduce one that was more positive because I was going through a lot of negativity when I was writing uh, my, my dissertation and doing research for my PhD. And I thought, well, there has to be a way to introduce more positive interactions in the workplace. So I looked at servant leadership mm. and servant le leadership is about giving of yourself, putting right. others first. Mm -hmm. So it, it's basically biblically based. And, mm -hmm. and so I thought, well, why is it that people would want to become a, a servant leader? And because human nature says we want people to serve us. Mm. I was very much intrigued by that. And as a result, I ended up creating this leadership model. And as I, after I created the leadership model, I started to write my book, uh, Hope for a Healthy Workplace. And while I was writing that book, I was at the time being bullied. But once again, I didn't know that I was being bullied. I labeled it as emotional abuse. And so in that book, I talk about uh, emotional abuse in the workplace and what leaders could do <clears throat> to prevent it. Fast forward, as I uh, finished writing that book and continued working into that organization, uh, the, the managers and uh, not, none of the, the employees uh, interacted with me in a negative way. The employees appreciated me because I would go in and I would value them, I would respect them, which is very, very important. Mm -hmm. So even though I was experiencing a lot of negativity, I chose not to you know, display that behavior towards employees. So fast forward, situations occurred, and I started writing my next book, which was on uh, workplace bullying. And I started doing research and I came across this concept of workplace bullying. And I said, oh, my goodness. Mm. I said, this is what I've been experiencing. I'm not going crazy. You know, the environment had changed. However, I knew that I was still giving 110%. And I knew that I was doing what I needed to do. And so I started to think, well, if I didn't know this concept existed, I wonder how many other people. And so that's why I wrote In Darkness, Light Dawns, because wow. I, I ended up doing some research on workplace bullying. And I said, well, it's going to be my mission mm. to get the word out because 
when I was going through my experiences, it was a very lonely time. And, you know, I thank God uh, for his guidance and, and protection. I thank him for my brothers and sisters in Christ who were there to support me and to pray for me. And I, you know, I thank him for my, my Christian friends, my, my, my church family, because it was a very, very challenging and dark time for me. And mm. I didn't understand why I was going through it. And I went through it for six years. Wow. And not knowing what I was going through until right. I started doing the research. And so I thought, well, if I didn't know what this experience was, I wonder how many other people don't know what it is. Mm. And so research has been done and approximately 37% of employees in the United States and Canada are experiencing bullying on a regular basis. And that statistic is, is alarming. Yes. I know that there aren't any uh, laws in the United States. Uh, so I, became, I started after I wrote my book, I became uh, active in trying to get legislation passed in New York State and also in Ontario, Canada. And Ontario, Canada actually passed legislation in 2010 mm. that was associated with uh, workplace bullying. And so what they did was they, they amended the Ontario Health and Safety Act. And so what we are trying to do, those of us who are very much interested in the legislation passed, we are focusing in on New York State, uh, hoping that the healthy workplace bills, bill that is before uh, the legislature will uh, be passed. And the reason why we need legislation is because unlike racial harassment or, or uh, sexual harassment or gender harassment, with workplace bullying, anyone can become a target. Mm. And what I found frustrating was that uh, unless a person can say, well, the reason why I'm being treated this way is because I have a disability or I'm a visible minority or whatever the case may be. Most courts in, in the States, you have the EEOC. Mm -hmm. EEOC if you put forth a claim on workplace bullying, they're not going to touch it because there isn't any legal, uh, uh, any case that, that would uh, support. And so they will ask, are you being discriminated against? Well, if you say yes, it's because I am a woman, uh, then they can put forth a claim. And so what I, that was very disturbing to me because there are so many people who are out there that are struggling mm. and they may not necessarily fit into a protected group status. And so they feel as if they're all alone. Right. And so the reason why I'm involved in this movement mm. is to try to convince politicians and whomever will listen that we need legislation and I truly believe that the workplace bullying is the next human rights, civil rights issue that needs to be addressed. Mm. Now, Dr. Barrow, let me ask you this. Um, so while there isn't a specific category that someone who may be experiencing workplace, but um, not violence, but bullying, does it kind of fall under harassment though? Uh, yes, it does fall under harassment. And the, the definition of workplace bullying is a repetitive behavior that devalues others. So when we look at workplace bullying, it is psychological harassment. You know, so mm. some people will say, it, you know, it's bullying. Others will say, we'll use the term psychological harassment. It is harassment, definitely. And the, the, the issue is, whether or not organizations, the human resources department is willing to, you know, conduct the investigation and do something about it uh, is, is a question that we, we often uh, are presented with, what's going to happen? And so with the workplace bullying, because 
it's often very subtle. And so what happens, unlike bullying on the playground where the bully says to the, to the target, give me your money or I'll punch you in the nose. Well, as adults, that's now how we interact with each other because we can go to jail. Right. <laughs> that's reality, right? Yep. And so what happens is in the workplace, I can figuratively punch you in the nose by uh, denying you opportunities for promotions. I can uh, public cut your hours. <laughs> cut your hours. I can publicly mm -hmm. humiliate you uh, in front of your peers. Uh, I can assign you meaningless tasks. Ah. I was talking to a, a lady today who called me uh, from Alberta, Canada, and she's, she's a nurse, and she said that she, her boss always has her do the jobs that no one else wants to do. And so if you are constantly the person being assigned these jobs, then you're probably being bullied. So with bu workplace bullying, so there's isolation where you may have your colleagues, uh, they won't interact with you any longer. So I, I know of a case where a lady, she used to, she worked at a university and she interacted with her, her colleagues, very positive. A manager came in and for whatever reason, the manager didn't like this woman. And so she uh, basically said to the to the the woman uh, that you're going to move your office over into the corner wow. and I, I don't want you engaging with the other employees so it got to the point where the other mm -hmm. employees would only talk to her when the manager wasn't in the area mm -hmm. and so they stopped inviting her out to lunch and things of that nature so that's a, a form of uh, social isolation mm -hmm. And so, so with workplace bullying, so you have your social I isolation, you have your destabilization, which is uh, basically assigning meaningless tasks and, and denying opportunities. Uh, there's public humiliation. Uh, there's uh, Can you give us an example of public humiliation? Uh, public humiliation. Uh, let's say that uh, you are in a meeting with your colleagues and your boss, every time you try to share your thoughts or, or concerns, uh, your boss will uh, dim dismiss you or may roll his or her eyes or, or may even call you out and give you a public performance review. Wow. And it, and it happens all of the time. So if you aren't aware of what workplace bullying is, you think, my goodness, what's going on? Why didn't he talk to me about that in private? Mm. And so what the bully is trying to do is to devalue you. And also what he, want, he or she wants to do is to uh, create an atmosphere uh, in which you are bullied by your colleagues. And so this is known as mobbing. So mm. what the bully will, will do in a subtle way is to convince others. So, well, did you see uh, Professor Beryl? Uh, she, she's not doing uh, as well as, as she used to do maybe six years ago or whatever the case may be. And then it's just start putting negativity into the minds. Into the minds. Mm -hmm. And so then others start treating the person in a, in a negative way. So the person who is targeted is still going along doing his or her job but the atmosphere has changed. Right. We're not quite sure, sure why it has changed. Now, let me ask you this, Dr. Barrow. Do you see, uh, over your time of research, have you seen if any kind of, is it more men that do this, or is it more women? Is it just kind of balanced out? I'm and glad she brought that one up. Go ahead, oh, Doc. Mm -hmm. Tell her, Doc. Tell her oh, who the real thing is. I asked that question. Yeah, that was a good question. That, hey, I was going to ask that too. Go okay. ahead. Yeah, I was like, um, I read a book years ago called Mean Girls, Meaner Women. Yeah. Mm. And it just seems like um, women can do this, some of the things you've described a lot mm -hmm. here. Yes. That we maybe develop those bad habits younger. We learned how to isolate. 
we learned how to give cold shoulders. We learned how to be nasty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nasty. Yeah. Very early on in life. So I'm wondering mm -hmm. if it's bared out that way. And, and you slick derogatory words. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's an excellent question because, you know, men and women both bully. So there are female bullies and there are male bullies. Male bullies tend to bully uh, everyone, you know, uh, but they will tend to focus on uh, women a little bit more. Female bullies will bully other females mm. the majority of the time. Mm. And... They do bully men, but for the most part, if you ha are dealing with a female bully, she's probably targeting another female. And it's important to understand why uh, with female bullying, uh, why it's so prevalent is because women, for the most part, are very relationship oriented, mm. right? And so women will tend to, if they're going to bully another woman, they will rely on uh, social isolation. Uh, they will rely on gossiping and, and uh, other of the uh, more subtle behaviors. Men, male bullies tend to be more uh, in your face, uh, more likely to uh, publicly humiliate you and uh, to put you in your place. And so that, that was an excellent uh, question uh, regarding the gender and, and bullying. So men, men and women are bullying each other. And it's important to also know that um, managers can bully employees. Employees can bully managers. Wow. And then they mm -hmm. bully, and then they bully colleagues. So it's important to understand mm -hmm. that. And then if, if they're dealing with customers, they could even bully the customers or the customers can bully them. So, a lot of folks are, are out there bullying one another. Wow. Dr. Barrel, I wanted, I wanted to talk about a point in your book um, under, under the chapter, The Bully Person, A Close-Up View, how, bully, how being bullied affects uh, health and wellness. Yeah. And he said, um, you said 31% indicated that they suffered physical ailments such as fatigue, nervousness, headaches, stomach aches on a regular basis due to mistreatment at work. 27% were depressed and became anxious when they thought about work or the mere, uh, a mere uh, thought about working rather. They said 32% rather indicated that being bullied had negatively affected their personal lives. So this thing is more than just, you know, you going to work and, go, and going home. This thing is psychological mm -hmm. and affects you physiologically as well. Yes, it does. And I have spoken to individuals who literally get sick when they pull into the parking lot of their workplaces because they are so fearful of what is going to happen to them. And so they begin to have migraines or they may uh, vomit or whatever the case may be before they even start their shift. Yeah. And I spoke to a lady one time and she was in manufacturing and she said, what she likes to do is to pretend that she is part of the equipment that she operates. Wow. She says, I don't, I, when I go to work, I am no longer a, a human. I become part of that equipment. And the reason why she said she does thinks that way is so that her boss doesn't bully her. So she believes as long as that, that uh, equipment is operating and she's kicking out uh, parts, she will be fine. She will not be bullied. If the equipment stops, that's when she gets bullied. So she says she feels as if she becomes one with the piece of equipment wow. so that she's not bullied. And, and how sad to think that someone has to go through that transformation before even walking into the workplace. Yeah. to dehumanize herself in order to survive. And that's, that's not right. With the uh, st statistics that you, that you mentioned, uh, the, some, those statistics were done, I believe, and my research was done in 2008, 2009 for the book. And 29% of individuals experienced, in my recent uh, research, 
experience anxiety and depression, 29%. So it's gone up. Mm -hmm. And there's a statistic that I want everyone to be aware of. When I first started my research, 7% of people who were bullied considered suicide mm -hmm. as a viable option. <laughs> 7%. My recent research, it has gone up to 10%. So 10% of people who are bullied are thinking about ending their lives because they feel hopeless and helpless. Yeah. This is why what I do is my mission, I see it as being a lifesaver. Yes. I receive those phone calls from people who are on the edge, who are considering suicide. I had a, a father a few years ago contact me. Uh, he said via email and said that he was, uh, he had just quit his job. He said he had been bullied at work. He said he was going to exhaust his, his savings and then he was going to uh, commit suicide. And he said, and I'm going to leave behind my 14 year old son. Wow. And when you're interacting with someone that distraught, you know, and I, I didn't know where this guy was. He, he emailed me, so I corresponded with him. And I was just praying. And I said, God, you know where he is mm. and you know what he needs. And so when we start talking about Christians and our roles, uh, role in uh, dealing with workplace bullying, praying for people, uh, coming alongside them, uh, letting them know that there is hope. Yes. There's hope. And yes. that uh, because when a person is, is experiencing bullying, they feel so helpless. Yeah. And they, they don't know what to do. And so as Christians, we can come along and say there's hope and, and that uh, this too shall pass. You know, because every experience when we're in it, no matter how negative it may be, if we still have that hope and we believe that someday uh, it's going to get better. And this is the message I, I share with others. I had an opportunity when I was lobbying in New York State a few years ago to meet an aunt of a, a young lady, uh, Jody Zebel. Mm. And Jody is a young lady working in in a hospital and her boss had been bullying her and and jody had the courage to go to, to human resources and to um, let them know what was going on and on a friday afternoon she went went to the human resource folk, uh, individuals and uh, the her her manager was called into the office called into hr and basically, long story short, had, had said to Jody when she returned, "You, why did you, why did you go to Human Resources? You wait until, you wait until Monday. We're gonna, we're going to deal with this on Monday." And so uh, Jody uh, went home, and she was uh, very distraught. She called her aunt. She called her mom on on Saturday, and and was just couldn't was very, very upset about what possibly could happen on Monday. Unfortunately, Jody committed suicide. Jesus. She, she left behind a husband and two children. And I share that story, and, and Jody's in my heart. I met her aunt, and her aunt obviously was very distraught. And she shared her story. And when I met her aunt, and I, right then and there, I said, I, I have to do something. You know, so when we look at workplace blame, because people think, oh, well, individuals are too sensitive. Uh, all they have to do is suck it up and what have you. No, when you are being bullied, it hits your core. Yeah. It touches mm -hmm. people in, in places that they don't even know exist. And unfortunately for Jody, she did not want to face whatever Monday had to come, whatever was coming on Monday. And so I am passionate, passionate about 
addressing this issue, I want everyone to know that you know, being publicly humiliated, being denied opportunities, the subtle uh, mobbing that goes on, this is, this is a real issue. And it's not, it's not kids play. It's not, oh, well, you'll get over it. And my concern, my concern is that we have these young, younger generations coming up who are very much aware of, of bullying Right. You see a lot of campaigns about yeah. stop bullying, stop bullying, stop bullying. I'm here to say we need to let these young people know that just because you turn 18 years old or 22 years old and or you go into the workplace, that bullying ends. They need to know that it doesn't end. Right. right. Correct. And I'm very concerned because the younger generation may not necessarily have the coping skills right. to, to deal with the bullying. So there are many aspects of uh, workplace bullying that we need to address. And so, you know, being in a situation like this where I have <clears throat> to talk about workplace bullying, I'm passionate about it because we are saving lives. Amen. We're totally saving lives. Amen. And I thank God uh, for the, the opportunity. I had to go through those years of bullying, and I didn't understand why I was going through those years. But I understand now because I can say to someone, I know how you feel. Right. I know what it's like. You know? And so you know, I, I, I thank you for this opportunity to – allow me to, to get my message out and to say to others, we as Christians, we can't go into the workplace and ignore what is going on. You see that colleague sitting alone. Mm, yeah. You see that colleague whose demeanor has changed. You see the boss targeting a person. No longer can we be bystanders. Amen. We cannot be bystanders. We need to stand up. Now, what I know happens, and this is one of the frustrations for uh, some employees, is that their colleagues will secretly, you know, oh, yeah, yeah I, I see what you're, what's going on, and he shouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. too. But when the targeted person musters up the courage to go to human resources mm -hmm. and says, well, my colleagues have seen it, and then they won't speak up. To him, they won't say anything. Yes. Yeah. So, I remember. I, I remember, I remember, it brings me back in, that, in 1998, I went into the mortgage business and, um, you know, I was new to the industry and what you just said, it kind of, it took me back. So I had a, I had a female boss and um, I was the only African-American male. Now it's something different about, and I have to, I had to go ahead and keep it 100. Uh, being when you when you're African American male versus a black uh, African American or African American female rather uh, black female, corporate America tends to treat the the black female a, a bit better oh, than, than than a black male, and even though there was a, a a black female in the office that I went in to work for. Um, she was very, like, she had some masculine, you know, qualities or whatever. Very outspoken, still, still smart, nevertheless, but so was I. Um, and so a part of when I first experienced bullying was I had to, like, if I, when I started working on the loan and I put the proposal and plan together, before I could present that to um, the client, I had to go to my boss. She had to sign off on it. Okay, check my numbers, so forth and so on. So, so now, you know, and everybody did, not just me, everybody had to submit the numbers. So when I would sit, submit my numbers, when I started, she was pretty nice. And I, but because I was smart, articulate, I wasn't afraid to, you know, say I had to answer. When I would submit my loans to, for her to look at them, she would reject them. Mm. You know, and I was like, then I go back, you know, she'll find like Nick pick little stuff. All right. So, you know, and then, so when I learned how to be perfect in the submissions, she would just say either 
you didn't submit it on time, or uh, if I submitted it early, or you submitted too early, you know, it's not about you. She would just have any excuse to turn down my submission. And um, she rolled me, like, you know, listen to screen my phone calls, you know, to the clients, you know, I'm talking to the clients, you know, where she didn't, it, she could listen to everybody's calls. But her excuse to me was, well, I'm listening to your calls because you're new here on this crew. You know, I'm, I trust them, you know, you know, so, so she would listen to my calls or, or if someone, you know, if you're talking to a client and they, you know, say something like a joke, make a joke to you, not a bad joke. You know, just by the basket game. Did you see the way he shot that three? And they're like, yeah, man, it was a wild, wild three-point shot, you know. Well, you, you're talking too personal with the customer. And, you know, it's, it was always something. To the point, I thought about quitting. Mm. And I was like, you know, it is, it's not even worth the money. You mm. know, and I would go home discouraged every night. And, um, and I had people from the ministry to encourage me that I talked to about it. You know, and uh, like stay, man, just, you know, muster through it, you know, if you can, because at that time it was a private mortgage company. So I didn't really have, you know, I didn't really have anyone to really go to. They didn't have anything in place, you know, like a hotline. I see more of, I see more of, you know, now outlets for people to make calls, to complain and stuff. But, you know, back in 1998, you know, and, and then the mortgage business is really a, it's an inclusive business per se, um, especially at that time. And so, and if you're being an African American, it was it, you were kind of blessed. I mean, you were blessed to be able to get in to, to be able to get those jobs. So I said, I have to say, what happened? You know, she ended up, you know, uh, you know, uh, getting pregnant. You know, and then you know went out on leave, and then she never came back. So it, you know, so I understand if that never would have happened. If she never would have left, I probably wouldn't have. I probably would have quit, you know, because there was no outlet for me. So yes, that, I mean, it happens. I, I wanted to. I wanted to tie a point into it, Doctor uh, Barrow. Sure. What about the people um, that may be in Rico situation, whose boss doesn't leave? Who they I mean? They're, they're praying that they leave, uh, uh, have a flat tire, don't ever come back. I mean, <laughs> you know. I mean, they they praying precatory prayers and all that, but <laughs> it, nothing so seems to, to happen or to work. So, <laughs> what would be your words of encouragement? I guess to to with two things. What are your words to the bullied, and then what are your words to the bully? I first of all, what Rico has has just explained happens all of the time. Yes, when you are a target of workplace bullying, I don't care what you can do, what you do, it's never good enough. Mm. So this is what adds to the anxiety and depression. Right. People often assume that the targeted person is weak. A uh, targeted person is someone who's not well liked. A uh, targeted person mm. who uh, doesn't know what he or she is doing. And uh, that's not correct. Some of the individuals who are targeted are very smart. They know their jobs. They're well liked in the organization. It's just that when the bully comes along, the bully sees something in that person that he or she doesn't like or may be intimidated by. So I often say to bullied employees, you don't have to do anything. Mm. to become a target of workplace bullying. Your very presence can mm. cause you to become the target of workplace bullying. And so if you are smart, you know your job, you're well liked, you could very well become the target of workplace bullying. And so what happens is the bully may begin to, especially if the bully is your boss, start with they will, and this happened to me with the, my first experience, where I would, I was given assignments and you know, goals to reach. I would reach those goals, and it seemed like the bar was always moving, mm. constantly jumping and jumping. And I said, "Well, I thought you said last week 
to do this mm -hmm. and now you're telling me to do that. Well, that's all part of the, the game and, mm -hmm. and psychologically, psychologically harass others. And so for the, the bullied person who's in that situation, a couple of things that you want to, to do immediately is to begin documenting. That's right. Documenting what has occurred, right? If you uh, have the courage to speak to the bullied, the, the bully and to say, you know, I don't appreciate this uh, particular behavior or, you know, let them know how you feel about it. That sometimes doesn't work and because the bully thinks, oh, now I have more. And then the bully may intensify his or mm -hmm. negative behavior towards you. So document, you know, let, let the, the manager know. If you're in a union, you contact your union rep and you let the union rep know what's going on. You talk to human resources. Now, unfortunately, uh, many of the individuals I have spoken to over the years have been very disappointed by how human resources has mm, handled the responded. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times that's why they end up calling uh, someone like myself to help them through the process. There are steps that can be taken. For the targeted person, it is so critical that they receive as much support as possible. Talk to their physician, uh, let their physician know what's going on at work, if they feel stress, if there are any uh, physical ailments or symptoms, uh, such as if you have a lot of stress and you're starting to uh, carry your stress in your, your chest and you think you're having a heart attack, but it's not a heart attack, it's stress. Your physician needs to know what's going on at work I often encourage people to talk to a mental health counselor and, and let them know what's happening and, and they can help you to uh, come up with skills, coping skills for dealing with the bully. Now the reality of the situation is that 44% of individuals who are bullied will leave their jobs or are terminated. Mm. I, I, I got a question. I got a question for you, Dr. Bell. All right, go ahead. What do you say for the people that because I know when you mention union, a lot of companies don't have a union. Okay, the unions are not present for that very point. <laughs> okay, um, but what do you say for people that are maybe being bullied? but don't want to be labeled because see now it's a slick way to be mobbed. Now you know, you have, you have a lot of managers that, especially for the veterans that have been there, they have their relationship with them and they tend to not, you know, if in, in a situation, the manager or the, 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 the new, the new person tend not, or the old team members tend not to gravitate towards the new person, mm -hmm. you know, for, because they're close to the manager, you know, so the manager has their, people you know per se and so a lot of times on on a particular job you can be labeled because especially if you if you're in a certain type of industry like in the mortgage industry everybody knows everybody you know depending on you know if you're working for big firms or big companies um managers tend to know other managers you know, because they're all at, at some point, especially the ones that's been in the business 25, 30 years, they've all worked together at another company at some point, you know, versus the people that may come in from out of town, you know. But how do you deal with the fact of being being labeled if you go to um, your human resources, okay, and your human resources deal with the situation you know, I mean, how? Because we understand, we know it's, it's supposed to be a no, a non -tal -tal a, a, a retaliation type rule, but there's different ways to circumvent that. You know what I mean? And how they circumvent it, you know, where you work for Company A, where the manager for Company A uh, has a cousin, and you know, in in another department, at Company B, you go to work at Company B, you know, and then they're like, oh. 
you know, the, 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 the manager from company A calls the manager from company B. They do golf together. And so now they just transfer the brilliant from one place to another place. You know, so, you know, even if you bring a, a, a situation against that manager at, you know, for, for, for company B, you know, so then you, you go there, you stay there a couple of years, you go through. So now you got this label. So you go to company C, right? Well, 10 years ago, the manager from company C worked with manager from company A, mm -hmm. right? So, so now you got to, now you become a, the troublemaker so to speak, because you're the one, not, now it's like, okay, well, he's going to be trouble because, you know, he brought a situation. They're supposed to be a, a non-retaliatory rule. We keep that in mind. But behind the scenes, these cats still talk to each other. Oh, yeah. They're blackballing you, essentially. Yes, exactly. And that's why a lot of the bullied employees end up leaving their organizations. You know, either they are terminated or they quit. And just the other statistic associated with that, only 1.4% of bullies are ever terminated. So we have a lot of bullies. Man. We have a lot of bullies. And so this is why I'm saying that organizations need to do more. They need to hold bullies accountable. If a person does not change his or her, her behavior, I don't care if they're the high performing. Um, I was just going to say that. Fire them. If they're not willing to change their, their ways, because if you don't fire them, what you're saying is it's okay. And we create a culture in which bullying is allowed. Yeah. And the other situation is if you have a union involved, and this is why you want to, to make sure you talk to your union reps. And if they are not doing their jobs, then you speak to the next person. You go all the way up the, up the, the chain of command in the union to say, we want to be protected. If you have a union in the collective agreement, it should specifically talk about workplace bullying. Question. Yes. Right there. When we, we mentioned the union. Yes. Now, I know either you or Seiko could probably answer this question. Now, I, you know, I'm not familiar at all with union, you know, and, and because I've never worked with the company, <laughs> because I've always worked with private companies or corporate companies that never had unions. Mm -hmm. um, is it hard for the people listening? Is it hard to to bring a union into a company? What's the protocol with that? What's the you know? What's the uh, is there blowback? Is there is some red? What you know? What's the process? Is there red tape? Is it easy? You know, because it seems as though a lot of these when you say one point four percent, because I know I've been I was in the mortgage business for fifteen years and I work for an insurance company now. We still don't have we don't have a union that for the, the insurance company I work for. So I don't know if that's uh, for certain industries, you know, but how, how can you get a union in place at a job that don't have a union, SACO well, or either Dr. Bear? Well, first of all, m many companies really don't want unions. Absolutely not. <laughs> you, know, you, you need only look at Walmart. Mm. And um, in Canada, there was a big movement years ago uh, to unionize at a uh, Walmart in Jean Pierre, uh, Quebec, and literally Walmart shut the door, shut the the uh, facility down, she just shut them right down because there was so much talk about uh, unionizing, and so it's a very difficult uh, process. And so when I am talking about union. I'm talking about those organizations that already have unions in place. Uh, they, they have the power uh, through the collective agreement to address uh, workplace bullying and to hold the employer accountable. If you don't work in a union environment, then the only other recourse after you have spoken to human resources, a manager, and whomever else within the organization your only other recourse is to uh, contact an employment lawyer and sue the company. And uh, a lot of times individuals will contact me and they want to sue. Uh, however, they've just been terminated. They don't have the finances uh, readily available. And so that's one more frustration uh, for individuals. 
as I said earlier, if you can tie the behavior to uh, the fact that you are in a protected group status, then you could file a human rights or employment equity uh, complaint. So there aren't a lot of options. And this is why I truly believe that we need legislation at the federal. Mm. federal. Yeah. Just like we have yeah. federal laws against uh, gender discrimination and, and racial discrimination, that's the type of law we need because what that does is it holds all organizations accountable. And if they are not creating an environment that is supportive of all employees, then they can uh, be penalized for, for their uh, inaction. So that's- well, Dr. Barrow, let me ask you this. Most workplaces do have policies in place around hostile work environments. Yes. Does this not fall up under that? Well, with the, what I have noticed is that, mm -hmm. yes, a lot of organizations have hostile work environment policies, but they don't enforce them. Okay. So it's not worth the papers written on. Mm. Going back to my statement earlier, where 1.4% of uh, bullies are, are terminated. So we have a lot of bullies in the workplace. Why are they still there? Why aren't you using the policies that you have written and, and typically, they're probably high performers in the organization. I was just, I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. and, or they're extremely manipulative. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So, <laughs> I mean, I just think about when I used to work in corporate America. But I think as believers, because this show is definitely targeted to believers, I think one of the big things that we could do, as Pastor Seiko has already said, is definitely pray. And as you said, pray. Mm -hmm. But I also think that we have a, a responsibility to bear the infirmities of the weak. I, I was no. gonna say that. I was gonna say that too, sis, because I was I, I wanted to touch on what you just mentioned. Scripture speaks more about bullying than what we give scripture credit for. You know, Dr. Barrow, you mentioned it, and, and this is one of the reasons why I had to have this sister on our broadcast, because it was by God's providence that I happened to fall in and in, in, in stumble into her uh, on YouTube and, and see that this 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 sister was talking about bullying. And I'm like, wait a minute. Then she quoted Proverbs 31, 8, 9, which reads, open your mouth for the mute or the dumb, for the rights of all the unfortunate. Open your mouth, judge righteously, and defend the rights of the afflicted and needy. Well, how, how applicable can this be mm -hmm. than a person, and this is why, I'm, I, this is why I wanted Dr. Barrow to, 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 to categorize the three B's, if you would, because I, I had it a third B. I'm not trying to alliterate, but anyway, not. Come on over. Don't, don't judge mm -hmm. me now. Don't judge me. But, but so I wanted her to address the, the, the bullied, the target. I wanted her to address the, 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 the bully, okay, the terrorist. And I wanted her to address the bystander, okay, mm -hmm. the bystander. So I believe that we have a response, like, like you said, it's it. Mm -hmm. We have a responsibility. Scripture speaks about this. And matter of fact, this is the second greatest commandment that Jesus talks about in Matthew 22, 39. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, mm -hmm. right? The golden rule, Matthew 7, 12, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you see someone being abused or being mistreated, would you want someone to speak on your behalf if it happened to you? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Dr. Barrow, we, we, need to, we need to address this. And at the same time, aggressively i would say fight for those who are fearful because a lot of people can't articulate the way that you're articulating how they feel and you know what the sad thing about it is as well not only do people like you mentioned about jody a true story about this young lady who took her life but some people would go in and take the lives of other people because they feel bullied can mm -hmm. you talk about that dr barrow and that is so true when so you have to understand when a person is being bullied and if they don't have the support and they're feeling helpless and they're feeling hopeless, yes, they start thinking and, and those who may resort to homicide will say, well, I'm going, I'm hurting so much. I'm going to take it out on that person. And so anytime I hear about, uh, you know, like a shooting in a, in a workplace, 
Yes. I, the news or, or the representative of the organization will say he or she was disgruntled. And I say, wait, not so fast. Mm. What was mm. really going on? Wow. Mm. So, yes. So I, because of, uh, of the work that I do, I don't automatically assume it's an, a disgruntled employee. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is what happened to that employee to mm -hmm. bring him to the point, mm -hmm. her to the point where mm -hmm. they would go into a workplace and kill their colleagues. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would say that if you started peeling that onion, mm -hmm. you would see that somewhere along the line, that person was bullied. And because this is what I was saying earlier, because with the workplace bullying, it's so subtle. Yes. And, and sure. the person is going in and they're working real hard. They're working hard. And a bully is, you know, manipulating the situation behind the scenes, uh, getting other people involved. You know, people may start to tease the, that individual, uh, may start to publicly humiliate that individual and all of this pressure. So the person is experiencing this they need their job. Yes. You know, they go home and, you know, their loved ones say, well, you know, just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a job. Just suck it up. You know, mm -hmm. you're stronger. You're strong. Don't be so weak minded or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot of pressure. Yes. Person. And that's a lot of pressure, even on a Christian. Yes. And on a Christian. And so we have to remember, you know, yes, we're Christians and, you know, we trust God and we pray and we know that he's in control. But that human part of us sometimes Come on. takes Come on. over. Come on. It, it, it takes over. And so right. yes, you know, this is why, you know, we need to be in the word. We pray. We interact with our uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. We get as much support as possible. But we also have to remember that the human part Yes. Because, you know, we, we become overwhelmed. How am I going to pay my bills? Yes. I lose this job. You know, I have kids in university or whatever the case may be. Yes. And so that pressure for individuals, some individuals will become so great that they figure, well, I'm going to uh, commit suicide. And you know what? I'm taking that person out who's been bullying me too. Mm. And mm -hmm. that's when we start talking about, you know, homicide in, in the workplace. And, and so I, I think that we need to, when we hear about situations like that, ask ourselves, what was going on? What would push a person to not only take his or her life, but also the lives of, uh, you know, their, their uh, colleagues? It's a very, very uh, difficult topic. Right. And it's an uneasy topic and, and people would rather not talk about this, but I am here. This is the reality of what's happening in the workplace. We have millions of people in the United States alone. You look around tomorrow, you go to work, you look around and you will see and you will be able to identify those individuals who are being bullied. Yeah. So I'm saying to folks, you know, wake up. Yes. Look around. We can't go into our workplaces and pretend that we are in silos. And I've worked in an organization where people basically just went in, they, they grunted, <laughs> good morning, mm -hmm. and they went into their offices and you didn't see them the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And so there is no connection. We need mm -hmm. to start realizing that we have to look out for each other. That's we right. have connect with people just because we spend more time at work than we do at home yes correct. So why can't we protect those relationships why can't we uh, become more involved in the lives of those with whom we we work on a regular basis and why can't we speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves yeah you know, why can't we do that we have we have a calling uh, to do that you know what? Uh, you gave me you gave me two thoughts about and we 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 say this and I and I say this you know um, I guess with conviction. Um, two things we say to people during the course of the day that we I I I really now I have given some more thought to this. Number one, how are you doing? And then number two, how is your day? Do we really really mean? or really, really want to know those questions, the answers to those questions when we ask that, you know, 
how was your day at work or how was your day today or how are you doing? You know, talking to you and just having this discussion, it, it even challenges me to really ask people those kinds of questions. No, no, really, how are you doing? I mean, the, the, the job that I do, um, you know, ironically, I deal with safety in, in, my, in my workplace. Okay, I'm a safety specialist. And so one of the things I do, I mean, I walk around, check for codes and things like that, make sure things are in compliance, but also I talk to people in my, in my, in my job. And you'll be amazed that my, my, my office says safety, but I've heard people tell me so many times out the barrel that that title means more than just compliance to audits, is that when they come through the threshold of that doorway, and I have people tell me this, they feel safe talking to me because sometimes they don't have anyone to talk to. And just being that ear, you never know. And I tell people this all the time. You never know what a person goes through. They can be, that, that workplace could be their place of solace yeah. from a hell of a situation at home. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a place of turmoil there too. So if they're going through hell at home and then they have to go through hell here. They're going to snap. Yeah. So, and so like Dr. Barrow said, you know, we are human beings. Although we are believable, we are human beings. Now, if we have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we can fall prey to the flesh, mm -hmm. what about those who have no barrier? At all. Amen. At all. And you and I are to be ambassadors for Christ. We are to be his mouthpiece. We are to be the ones who speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. And so, you know, I'm just, I'm just really challenged by, by this because, Dr. Barrow, I'm telling you, there's not a lot. This is the only discussion that I've really had regarding this topic of workplace bullying. And it is, it's more serious than what we have given, given attention to. It really is. And being that you are involved in health and, sa health and safety, it is a health and safety issue. That's right. Imagine, remember I talked earlier about the people who are physically ill, Yes. And, and consumed with what's going to happen with them when they get to work. Yes. Imagine if they are operating a piece of equipment and they're, think, they're so worried. Like I, I talked about the lady earlier. If she's so worried about what's going to happen, mm. she could end up hurting herself or she could end up, up hurting others. Yes. You know, because their her mind is so consumed with trying to avoid the bully and trying to do the right thing or worried about, Oh, is he coming around the corner or what's going to happen that they lose focus. And so I, I have been a health and safety officer uh, myself and I want to know what's going on up right. here. That's right. It goes beyond you know, making sure that you wear your safety glasses. That's right. Gloves. It's about how are you doing mentally? Because if you're preoccupied with what may happen or what was just said to you, the likelihood that you, you will probably be injured on the job is significantly mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. That's right. Especially if you work around machinery and you can't, oh. you're not focused, your mind is not on it. So yeah, I've, I've worked in places when I was younger, you know, I worked at a chicken plant and people not paying attention, worried about something, not just, just kind of drift off, get fingers snapped. Yeah, so it, so yeah, it is yeah. important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I, and again, I, I, go ahead, Doc, I'm sorry. No, I, it wasn't Dr. Barrow, that was me. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> got two women on the line now. <laughs> I get confused. <laughs> right, right. So what I was going to say, too, was um, also there was conviction for me Yes. In regards to being a bully. Wow. Um, and saying, you know, would I have described myself in this one particular workplace as a bully? No, I wouldn't have described you, myself that way. But you was a bully. You was a bully. <laughs> and now that you I'm, was thinking, a bully. I'm thinking about you was a bully. <laughs> that is so about you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm like using your influence in the yeah. workplace. Because you just don't like somebody. Wow. And so I yeah. think there's some admonishment on our parts to make sure that we aren't contributing to bullying or being a bully or encouraging a bully type environment. 
especially if you are a person to who much is given, much is required. That's right. Where you do have some leadership, make right. sure that you're being a good steward over that leadership right. and right. not encouraging people to act in fleshly ways. And I definitely, uh, one situation popped in my head and I'm like, oh, wow, you were definitely a bully in that situation. And, and thinking about how it came to play, some of the things that you were talking about, other people who I brought into it with me, wow. um, who I would find out, said to Susie, I'll just say Susie, that they say, yeah, you know, Sydney is a bully, Susie. Da, 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 da. And I find out about it, be like, oh, you talking about me? And they'd be like, no, 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 no. You know, just that whole silly, um, ungodly behavior. Yeah. That was also fed by my manager. So when I think about this, my manager, mm -hmm. um, because it was a sales environment, so very similar to you, Rico, where mortgage is very sales driven, very commission driven, um, personalities are very high. Uh, the aggression is sometimes applauded. Mm -hmm. um, it is. Mm -hmm. So when you work in those environments, the way the bullpen is set up, even how your seats are set up, mm -hmm. wow. uh, all of that just kind of contributes to act mentality. So I know for me, in thinking about that now, I wanted to bring that up. So if somebody is saying, you know, well, this is silly, you probably ought to bully, or you're contributing to that toxic environment. Now, I want to start you stay right there. You said something that, and I just mentioned this not too long ago. When I was doing mortgages, and they do it now in the job that I work at now. It's like they have a board up, right? They have a board. They have a sales board, right? So, now, keep in mind, every time you make a sale, they're already tracking the number in the system. They don't need the board, right? Because they know how many sales you have already. It's right. like Pablo's dog, though. <laughs> you want to so, see my name go up. <laughs> so, 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 so now you got a, you got the metric units for the month. Now you got, you know, this person got this person has like nine, and this person has five, and this person has three, this person has two, you know, this person has one, this person has nothing, you know, and then you get on the call, you know, and, and then they send the reports out daily, right? So every time the person get a sale. Right, it come across your email as well, so you're constantly badgered. If you're on the person on the bottom line, that's a form of bullying too, because it, for for some people, you know, I know what I was in the mortgage business. I was never motivated, or even now, I'm not motivated by what somebody else do, because psychologically, it's training you to keep up with the Joneses. So you're so worried about what somebody else has, and so then it pushes it pushes you into non-compliance because now you don't want to, you don't want to keep the rules to get a sale because you don't want to be number one on the board. Cause then even though, you know, and then another, they get you, you get a plaque, you know, whoever you the number one serpent to get a, you know, you, you get your name on a plaque. So I imagine how a person feels that they're number one, they're, they're one or two or three, you know, you see what I'm saying? Look, you see, this is doggone bully. You know what I'm saying? Mean, bully, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, bully. No remorse. This is going to hold all packs up in front of Okay. Anyway. So, we can just well, go ahead. We, we, don't have a, we don't have another show about you. So, we're going to go ahead and just pray on that one. So, uh, yeah. So let me, Lord, let me bless her. So, let me, let me say this real quick because I know Dr. Brown yeah. has to go because our time is running short on this. But I wanted, I wanted to add one last point, Dr. Barrow. Give, some, give a word to the bully, okay? We already talked about the bully person. We talked about the target. We talked about the person that's, that's, that's the standard, you know, just the one that's just basically bystander. But what about the bully? Because that, they have a problem. They have a serious problem. What would you say to that person or, or persons? To the, the bully, I would say... Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Now, I, I say that because, and, but then I, I have to clarify that because some uh, bullies would say, well, the way I'm treating them is the way I want to be treated. Mm -hmm. But I like mm -hmm. to go a little bit further and say, uh, adopt 
attitudes and behaviors that uphold the value of others. Mm. And be mindful of how your actions you know, affect others. Right. Think about the statistics that I shared and that, that one statistic in particular that you know, 10% of people who are being bullied consider suicide. How would you feel? Come on, come on. You found out that the person you were bullying committed suicide because of your actions. Right. Can you live with yourself? Can you live with yourself? And I think it's important. Yes, we, we have uh, objectives, goals that need to be met in the, in the workplace. But adopting behavior that is negative, behavior that is devaluing, is not going to motivate employees. It's going right. to motivate employees. And so what I would encourage bullies to do is to begin to adopt pro-social behaviors, behaviors that are positive, behaviors that encourage employees to, to become motivated and to want to achieve all that they can achieve. Relying on bullying behaviors, uh, publicly humiliating others or demoting others or, or giving them jobs that are meaningless does not help the organization achieve its goals. And what it does is it harms the targeted person. So right. what I would encourage a bully, bullies to do is to really take a look in the mirror and to search their souls and to find out what is driving it. Because on some level, uh, bullies are intimidated by individuals uh, perhaps they're acting this way because years ago uh, someone told them that they were not strong enough, smart enough, mm -hmm. and now that they are in a position of authority or working with uh, colleagues, they feel that they can begin to treat others in this manner. manner. And for the bully, know that your actions are harming others. You may think that you are just doing your job, but I'm here to say that your behavior is impacting the targeted people in a way that you cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. You cannot imagine. And so I would encourage you as a bully to, to get the support uh, that you need, understand what workplace bullying is, I'm a true believer that we can all change our uh, attitudes and behaviors and, you know, with the grace of God, you know, if you're a Christian and you are, are bullying others, mm. then you need to bring that before the Lord. You know, yeah. that's an area in your life that uh, you know that you are interacting with people in a negative way, then, uh, you know, God can change that. Amen. And, can transform your heart. Amen. You can become uh, someone who is uh, contributing to the workplace in a positive way instead of a negative way. And I and I also add to add to that. You know, if that doesn't work, whatever man sowed, if that shall he also reap too. Yes. You know, and and as a bully, if you continue bullying, 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 bullying someone, then you know that situation can be flipped around on you in another way. It may not be on this job. It may be on something else, right. you know? So, um, you know, just because you haven't been, you know, dealt with at this point doesn't mean that you won't be dealt with. Right. That's true. That's true. And I must say that if, to your comment, uh, I, I think it reminds me of uh, one of the bullies I had a few years ago. And uh, this gentleman was just wreaked havoc in my life. And after I was out of the organization, six months later, he retired. And after probably a month or so being uh, retired, he, he died of a heart attack. Wow. Wow. 
And I, I could not help but think, you know, how he treated mm-hmm. me, and how he treated others. You know, you, we just don't know. That's right. And, and, you, and you still here. And I'm right. still here. <laughs> yeah. and, and I just say, so you don't think, and that, that's kind of like an extreme case, but right. when I heard mm-hmm. that he had passed, and I thought, you know, I, I, I prayed that he uh, came to know the Lord as the Savior. I don't know if he did or not. Right. And that's all we can pray uh, for, yeah. for the uh, bully. And one of the things I want to say, if you are a Christian and you are being bullied, what you, I, and I know this <laughs> makes it hard, this is <laughs> hard what I'm about to say, but yeah. trust me, I want you to begin to pray for that person. Mm. Begin to pray that God would work in that person's heart. Man. It would be transformed. Now, when you start praying for that person, it doesn't mean that the situation is going to get easier. It may get rough. Amen. It may intensify because at the end of the day, we are dealing with a spiritual battle. My, my, my. Amen. Spiritual battle. And so, yes, you you know, so-and-so may be able to terminate you or what have you, but we need to, as Christians, look beyond the job Amen. And the person and see that this is a spiritual battle Amen. That you are involved in. And so when you start to look at your situation from a biblical standpoint, from, from uh, God's point of view, then you say, you know what? I don't like what I'm going through, but I can go through it because Jesus is with me. My, my, my. Is that a preach? Is that a preach, Doc? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't want to take your place. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> preach. But I, I share that because having gone through the bullying experience, that's what I had to do. Yeah. And I remember driving to work one day and, and uh, where the bullies were. And, you know, I just had a feeling. I said, you know what? I'll probably, I have this feeling I may be terminated today. Wow. I don't know where that came from, but I know it was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And I said, well, Lord, what should I say? You know, if this is the day that I you know, leave the organization. And he gave me two words. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Amen. <laughs> Woo. Amen. A goodbye. Wow. Amen. Thank you. And I'm driving and I, and I said, Lord, what should I say if I'm, if I'm terminated? And he said, thank you. And I went to meet the HR person. And sure enough, he said, well, your services are no longer needed. And I looked at him and I said, thank you. Wow. Simple as that. Thank you. You know, and then the other phrase that God gave to me is trust me. Mm. Trust me. And so yeah, yeah. He, we have to trust him. Yeah. We don't understand what's going on, but we know he's in control. So I, I pray that this time together has been a blessing and yes. provided hope of yes. the viewers who may be experiencing <clears throat> workplace bullying know that God's in control. Amen. Amen. And if you don't have the book, if you do not have this book, it is called In Darkness Light Dawns by Dr. Lisa Barrow. Uh, Dr. Lisa, let people know how they can contact you, how they can reach you, um, because we wanted to get the word out. Uh, this, this, this broadcast will be posted on our YouTube page, and um, so people will be finding out about this as well. But you know, just, just right now, how, how can people contact you? Website, you know, ministry information, go for it. My website is drlisabarrel.com. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, drlbarrel, and just send me an email, drlisabarrel at gmail.com. Amen. Amen. And you also have another book, I believe, it's called uh, Hope for a Healthy Workplace, right? Yes. Yes. Great, great, great. I'm going to be getting that book as well. I definitely appreciate it. Dr. Lisa, thank you so much for your time. Uh, uh, prayers to you and also to your husband. Uh, thank you for just sharing your insight, your expertise in this particular subject. Look forward to seeing you again soon. We'll be having you on the show again soon regarding this topic again. 
Thank you very much for the opportunity to spread the word. Thank you. God bless you so much. Thank you. Dr. Lisa Barrow, you guys. Thank you all. Y'all know how we do it. Yes. Glad to have you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Listen, I know I was blessed by what we heard. And uh, it's a challenge uh, uh, to to all of us, whether we either have experienced bullying, uh, whether you have uh, been an eyewitness to bullying, and unfortunately, either you are the one that's executing uh, the the bullying. You know what I'm saying? So we, we understand that, you know, whatever station that you are in, God is going to hold us responsible for how we respond to whatever treatment and whatever we do. And as Christians, there's no excuse, no excuse for us to be in sin or to allow sin to go on under our watch. And we do not respond and do anything about it. We live in the last days and we already know uh, that the enemy is not playing fair and he's not playing you know, uh, for for any type of little game. This is serious. He's looking for souls, and and, and unfortunately, a lot of people uh, are are going into this situation, going to their workplaces, and then and like Dr. Lee said, said uh, they don't they don't know how to respond, and then they don't know uh, how to deal with this kinds of stuff. And so it, it takes us as as believers, man, to to really encourage each other, uh, to stand alongside each other. I know a lot of times, you know, we we kind of like minimize how important it is just to talk to a person to take a few moments out of your day just to speak to a person and just say, Hey, how you doing? Or, you know, if you need to talk, I'm here, you know, it, it, it can go a long way. You never know. You may be saving somebody from killing themselves or killing someone else along with you. We're not exempt. Right. <laughs> We're not exempt. Amen. Not, listen, I, listen, I work for an auto auction. Do you know how many people come in there and have their cars repo? Who we? Do y'all understand? <laughs> so y'all need to be praying for me. Well, I know it's crucial. So you have people coming in there making appointments to pick up their vehicle, and then sometimes these vehicles don't have the property that was in it when it was picked up. Oh no. Okay. So don't think that workplace violence, you know, happens at military bases or it, it can happen anywhere as long mm-hmm. as the heart of man is in the environment and in that workplace mm-hmm. you and i are prone to workplace violence let alone workplace bullying so we need to be praying like dr lisa said for uh for bosses and supervisors praying for our co-workers praying for each other mm-hmm. praying for ourselves that we if we experience this kind of thing because i'm telling you how many of y'all want to pray for somebody that's abusing you, even though Jesus tells us to pray for our enemy, pray for those that despitefully use you and abuse you? You know, it's not easy. And I tell people all the time, Christianity is not for the weak. Mm-hmm. It is not. It is not. Who it is for is for those who are humble, those who recognize their need for a, a savior. But once you're saved, you can't do this in your own strength. So when I say it's not for the weak, I'm saying don't, don't think that you can go to, oh, I, I'm saved and I can handle anything. No, 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 no. By the grace of God, only by the grace of God can we deal with the situation that we're dealing with. So uh, I just want to encourage us all tonight. This is our first time being back on the broadcast. After we've taken our little break, we've got a lot of shows that we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, Sister Sydney, I think you have a couple of topics you want to address, right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> do, you wanna, do you wanna tell the audience just real quick what the topics that you have on your heart? Just- yes, yes, yes. Uh, but before we do this, I didn't want to go back to sure. the motivation of a bully. Because again, I think it's really easy for us to point out flaws in other people without taking the time to examine yourself. Amen. And so when Dr. Barrow was saying, you know, some of the things could have been that, you know, they were insecure or they're or they're jealous or Maybe they have been bullied before and now that they have a position of power. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, as a salesperson, former salesperson, I still consider myself a salesperson, even as an entrepreneur. I still see myself as a salesperson. One of the things that I meditate on is 1 Timothy 6, 9. Mm. And it talks about, because that was my motivation. Wow. The desire to be rich. Wow. Um, The desire Mm. to amass large amounts of money. And when we read that scripture, it says, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people. So not just yourself. Yes. But everybody connected and others around you into ruin and destruction. Amen. And so that motivation, 
especially in sales oriented environments where the, where the board is up there, where you're giving trophies, where you're giving golden handcuffs in the form of stock options yeah. or whatever it might mm -hmm. be that is pushing you and driving you. Know that it's not just the Atta girl that you're going after. Mm -hmm. It's the wickedness in your heart that is mm -hmm. looking to make money your idol. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to bring that up just as a salesperson who might be watching. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who works in that environment, that our heart, Jesus is after your heart. The Amen. motivation behind why we do it. Amen. Is, it's worth examining that. So I wanted to bring that up. Um, in terms of the topic that I want to talk about, my big one, Dr. Bear, yeah. I'm getting ready to get real ghetto. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's I would fit me. <laughs> but I just really want to talk about um relationships and the dynamics specifically mm. between male and female relationships. Um, and I'm not talking about marriage. I'm talking about platonic relationships, mm. um, how women should be at interacting with men in the body. What does it look like as a married woman? What does it look like as a single woman? But just what does it look like? Um, one of the things that has dismayed me just over the couple of last couple of weeks, but it's always something that I'm watching to kind of give you guys a preview of next week's show and where I'll be coming from with it. Um, I think there's a, a an appropriate way to interact with brothers in the body. Mm. And I think I see a lot of women, and unfortunately this ain't just, this isn't just single women because I know a lot of women who follow the show are married women. So they might be thinking, oh yeah, them thirsty single women. Yeah, that's what they, no. <laughs> no, sis. <laughs> it's true. That's, that's applauding somebody else's husband, yeah? So yeah. we want to talk about that and what does that look like to be an encouragement to your brother in Christ, but making sure that we stay <laughs> in our place. And yeah. So that's actually what we're going to talk about next week is, yes. is how do we do that in the body? What does that look like, especially in the advent of social media, where wow. you access Amen. Kind of way. So. Amen. So that's what we talk about next week, and then uh, we'll. we'll uh, I, I want to bring on another brother um, um, that has a book called Just That Quick. It's called Game Over. Uh, this is called, book is called Game Over. Um, I have my daughters reading it. Uh, I need to get back into reading it. Uh, he deals with uh, the relationship with fathers and his daughter and their daughters. Uh, so uh, he, uh, he. I forgot the brother's name. Just that he, he'll kill me if you watch this video. But he talked to me this this early this evening, early this uh this this uh this afternoon, and I told him I said I'm going to get him on the broadcast since we just got back on the uh on the air, and I'm going to bring him on the show to uh, Willie Richardson. Thank you, Willie Richardson. He has a book called Game Over. Get the book. Get the book. It is a very very good book. Uh, we're going to be bringing him on the show low one sometime this month as well too. So uh, be praying for us, you guys. Be praying for us. Uh, keep us in your prayers. Keep us lifted. You know, anytime we have this type of uh, this type of ministry, this type of show, you know, the enemy will try to do whatever he can to try to break up what we are trying to build up. And so, Amen. Uh, Amen. people people are being blessed by it. You know, most of our listeners, we, we if they come up, if they're not here on the chat, they follow and and and, and catch our broadcast on YouTube. And so people have been looking forward to having us, you know, come back on. So we're here. Uh, if you have topics, if you, anyone you have topics or, or, or uh, mm -hmm. issues that you'd like for us to address, if we don't know, we'll, we'll be, hey, listen, if we don't know, we'll tell you. We don't know. But we'll get right. the answers for you. Or we'll bring somebody on the show that does mm -hmm. know. Okay? Uh, but we want to be a blessing. We want to be a, a, a service to the body of Christ. And we want to let people know as well, this is not a substitute for your involvement in the local church. Amen. This Amen. is this is a supplement, not a substitute. Get involved with your local church. Serve in your local church. Get busy and you won't get in trouble. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say about and that. You won't be the subject of our show. Come on, come on. In the words of Forrest Gump, in the words of theologian Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. So, um, uh, any any closing thoughts before we before we end the show tonight? Nah, I just want to say, you know, I I, I learned a lot, um, you know, and just knowing that uh, there are other people that go through things, and I want to say, you know, for that person that's being bullied at the workplace, you know, hang in there. You know, when you get to that point, and I'm gonna say this, you know directly to you if you get to that point where you feel like you have to commit suicide um 
because you 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 are just that uh, depressed, quit the job. See, see, you know, God can bless you. You know, He gave you that job. He can give you another job. You know what I mean? God is your. Always remember that the the Lord is your resource. You know, He can provide for you. You know, and if you don't, because I know uh, as we talked about certain jobs, they don't have. You know, there are certain jobs you have, and they just don't have a good front office. They don't have a, a decent human resources. You know, and that that human resources manager. Uh, just may be in with the manager that's bullying you, you know. And if it, but if it gets to that point, man, quit. You know, God can bless you. You know what I mean? It's not worth your health. It's not worth your life. Even if you get to that point to where you're just grown and you want to go in with a gun and and take it in your, own, it's not even worth that. You know. So I say to you, you know, continue to dig in. You know, dig into your word. You know, at your local church. I know you may not have some people in your church that may not work with you. But you can kind of spend time with them at work and other hours, you know, let, you know, increase your social life. So you can, when you're around people that love you, that tolerate that, that, that more than more, that more than just tolerate you, they actually enjoy you being, you enjoy you being around, go around them, spend time with them so they can build you up. You know, the reason you go to church is so, so that you can uh, forsake not your assembling of yourself with other believers. So just going to church, being with another believer, it encourages you. You know, it encourages you to, to keep going forward. You know, even if you don't necessarily, you know, it's just something about being with the saints. When you're around another saved person, you know, just that spirit alone builds you up. So if you find yourself in that position at your job and you just don't like it and you just hate getting up going to work every day, you know, begin to pray and ask the Lord to show you, is it time for you to move on? You know, is it time for you to find something else? You know, or, you know, ask the Lord to send you to the person you need to talk to that can possibly change your situation in that job. Or, Lord, give you to, to ask to pray and ask the Lord to give you strength to muster through. It could just be a season. You know, if everybody's outcome is totally different. Some people, you know, and, and, and especially with, uh, with Seiko's case, you know, he got the boot. He had to roll. He got bounced on out. But that bully that's bullying, bullying you may not get bounced out. You, you follow me? You know, it may just be a season. God could very well touch his or her heart uh, to stop doing what they're doing. But b b by all means, pray and let the Lord lead you, you know, through, you know, what channel does he want you to take or what, which way he wants you to pivot. So that's what I was saying to the bullying person. Man, stop that fool's. Stop it. You know, just stop it, pretty much. You know it's wrong already. You know, you know right from wrong. Because if you have a job to where you're managing other people and you have that power, you know you're bullying. You know you're bullying someone. It's not like you're void of understanding. You know, don't do people that way because you don't want nobody to do that, way, do that to you. What if that was your son or daughter that's being bullied? You wouldn't like that. You know, you have something to say about it. So, but I'll, I'll always say this. Be careful who you bully. Because that person that you bully could be your boss one day. Oops. Amen. Amen. And with that, we're going to pray. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Let's pray, y'all. Father, we thank you for this broadcast. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given to us all. And thank you, Father, for our guest, Dr. Lisa Barrow. We pray and ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to use her mightily uh, for your glory and for your kingdom. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the time that we spent together on, through the means of, of the Internet. And we ask and pray, oh God, that the words that were shared and that were spoken would be a blessing to those who may hear this in the upcoming days. And Father, I pray and ask God for those who are being bullied, that they'll they're find their strength in you, that they'll find that you are their rock, that you are their yes, salt, that you are their salvation. We pray and ask, Heavenly Father, for, that, for those who are being uh, uh, bullied, that they will get strength and encouragement, that they will get the help that they need, Lord, uh, during this time. Help them, oh God, to persevere and to take a stand and to be strong in the power of the Lord. We ask and pray, God, for those who are being bullied, as, our, as our Dr. Lisa had mentioned earlier, Father, that they will repent. 
that they will turn from their sin and that they will turn to you, that they will be broken, Lord, in their in their sin, that they will understand, oh God, that they will one day have to stand before the boss of all bosses, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yes, and they will Lord. have to give an account Hallelujah. for every mm-hmm. deed, for every thought, for every action, for every motivation and every manner of life that they have committed in this earth realm. Father, we know for those of us who are saved, oh God, that there will be rewards lost. But for those who are not saved and those who profess to be saved but live a life of wickedness and sinfulness, we know, Lord, that they will lose not only their souls, but, Father, but they will spend eternity in your wrath. And so, Father, we do not wish death upon any man. We do not wish death upon any woman. We want those who do that are in our lives to be saved. And so, Lord, we pray that our own conduct and our own behavior that will be salt and light before a watching world. Yes, Lord. And we, Heavenly Father, will be people, Lord, of change, that people will see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in yes. heaven. And so, Lord, we just say thank you tonight. We ask and pray to God for those who have been a part of this broadcast, that they have been blessed by what they have heard. We pray that you'll bless each and every one of us on tonight. Let us have a good night's rest. Give us strength to, to take on the challenges of tomorrow. Prepare our hearts and minds for worship on the Lord's Day. And, Father, we know that we're celebrating Labor Day, but we know that our labor, Heavenly Father, and our trust and our rest is in you yes. because your son, Jesus Christ, did it all for us on Calvary's cross. And so, Father, we just say thank you. And until we meet again, Heavenly Father, through this broadcast, we pray that you will keep us, guard us, protect us, and let everything we do do to be to the glory and honor of your son, Jesus Christ. And all for his name we pray and ask. Amen. 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 All right, guys. So until next week, Dr. Barrow, thank you again for taking time out of your evening. So nice meeting you. And we'll make sure we get our books. Yes, Seiko put the Absolutely. There it yeah. is. There it yeah. is. Yeah. Come on now. I ain't getting paid for it, but it's right here now. <laughs> Thank you. God All bless right, you guys. Grace and peace. We'll All see right. you guys next week. God bless. And Sydney, don't be bullying nobody, Sydney. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>